Okay, guys, I'm here today with my Gene Hedge. A uh, huge honor for me. Guys, he's the baseball choke man. I think everybody knows him. He has the best baseball choke in the world in Jiu Jitsu. And uh, I remember competing in Jiu Jitsu on some tournaments that he was for uh, sign up for the open class. And I always scared to compete against him because you never know what's going to happen. And he does this baseball choke from everywhere. And uh, the best positions for you is when people put pressure, right? Uh, yeah, smash so passes when people like to pressure pass because pressure passes are really slow you know they're not like a toriano where you just throw the legs to the side and jump to side control it's like inch by inch and it gives you the time to set up the grip while the guy's focused on yeah. you know keeping the pressure and driving forward and driving forward and another thing about the pressure pass is like when you're working that hard for a pass even if you notice that I make the grips, you don't want to let go of everything you just worked for to break the grips and then give me space to recover my guard. Got it. You know? oh, that's awesome. And guys, uh, so today he's going to show us here how to do the baseball choke from the overhander pass, which is my favorite passing. And I bet it's one of your favorite spots yeah. to apply. Hopefully it. I don't get knee barred before I get the no, choke, right? No, but there we go. I'm very excited to learn. All right, so if Bernardo's here, in this over under right he's got he's stuffing my leg his other arms busy hold, clamping down on my belt right i'm gonna be framing so normally what i'd be trying to do to recover my guard would just be push away to get my knee out to maybe recover right so i'm gonna use that pushing and framing to get my four finger grip in on this side so i'm gonna push and bernardo's gonna keep the pressure and i'm gonna get this grip in okay once i get this grip in I can come around the top, open my hand right here to make some slack so I can grab the top of his gi, right? Now I can let him pass. As he sprawls and weaves his leg around, I'm going to upa so his head comes up and I bring my elbow across, right? Now I start to roll to the side and squeeze and you get the tap. It's really, really tight. Yeah. Oh my God, almost slept. <laughs> That's amazing. So. So again, so if he's here, keeping the pressure right, and I'm trying to escape, I use this framing to make the collar loose so I can feed my hand, right? Now I have to kind of act like I'm trying to get out so Bernardo keeps the pressure, keeps trying to pass. I make my second grip. As he comes around to pass, he gets his leg out. Right when he gets the side control, he's gonna come to hug my head. I'm gonna bump so I get a little bit of space here, you see? Now my elbow can come across, and then it turns into a cross choke. I can start squeezing, turning to my side, and getting yeah, the that's tap. That's amazing. Oh, that's really amazing. Oh, but you, so, I mean, like, I saw from the overhander right now, but for someone who wants to learn the baseball choke, what's the most important principles there that you gotta kind of like dominate? Yeah, so it's really important to get comfortable getting that four finger grip. In Jiu Jitsu, you're always taught- Show me from one another position. Yeah, right you're now, always just, taught, cross grips i'll do one from right here yeah. like if we're playing guard here you're always taught to use these cross grips or this this is an awkward kind four of fingers grip in. four right. fingers in on the mirror side same side right. right but if i have this grip i can just kind of play guard with you be lazy on this side when you come to pass yeah. i got it man that's amazing i can grab the second grip and go for it that's it Oh, yeah. And there are situations that the person goes to the mount that they take they your back the and you're still back. going, right? Yeah. So you I don't even care. tap people out like when they get an arm bar. So if you get an arm bar on me, right, I'm here, boom, and you step and come over, the choke's still on. <coughs> He'll still tap. And it's really hard for him to extend my arm because I have two grips on the collar, right? So try uh, to finish the arm bar. Man, I can. It chokes you, right? Keep I going. Feel like Keep going. Yeah. That it, or exactly. Like, that's the only it, like. If you try to stretch out for the armbar, it chokes you. So it's really important. Like if you're gonna defend the choke, you have to break the grip. You have to only focus on breaking the grip. But, so maybe like both hands in the yeah, wrist or something. Yeah. But like what that. happens is people. If you're in side control, people don't want to go to break the grip because go to break my grip. Now you give me space to get out. Oh, I got it. You know, but they don't because they don't want to lose. The they don't want to lose the position, and they think that they even if I go to my stomach, like if I turn on my stomach, they try to take my back, take my back, and then fall back. 
and then we're here, right? I still have the choke really tight. And, and just want to tell you here, like, someone I just felt right now. So someone's like to do something for a wrist as well. Isn't yeah, it? it's, a, it's just like a cross choke. Like when you do that flex. Yeah. For the cross choke, right? So when I get here, now it's just a cross choke. I just flex my wrist. So I don't have to use a lot of strength. It's not like pulling too much. It's just a little flex in the wrist and the Man, choke comes amazing. on tight. Oh, that's right. Oh, imagine, have you ever done any X type of exercise to make, because you have this like really freaking Grip, strong. Yeah. Like, when you do this, I felt like there's a knife here on my uh -huh. neck. So it's just like practicing a lot this type I of choke. I did a lot of you? like, uh, you know the row machine? Yep. So I would always go to the gym and put a gi on the row machine and, go, oh and do sorry. rows okay. for my grips because I think that uh, grip fighting is really important and having endurance in your grips, you know, being yeah. able to hold on because ever since I was like 14, when I started doing baseball chokes a lot in tournaments, a lot of people would go to sleep. Yeah. And in the process of them going to sleep, they would be trying so hard to get out you know, and push and arm bar or stretch me up, that it got to the point where I knew if I was gonna do it in the adult divisions, yeah. or against stronger people and in the open weight, I would have to hold the grip until the guy sleeps. Cause yeah. nobody taps to it. Everybody ends up going, like maybe 80% of the people that have baseball choke end up going to sleep because they don't want to tap, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, they, I can see that. So and I know that I have to hold the grip for as long as I can. Yeah, no, and especially like if like, you have the choke set up, but man, if I'm on your back, I don't want to no, tap. There's an no extra way. motivation. I can't tap. No, and then the coach you're telling you, or maybe the guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, Maji and guys, like uh, I remember him competing. Like I just asked him how old is he? He's 28 years old. So I remember him competing as a black belt, like 10 or 9 years ago, and he was probably like 18, 19, and tapping everybody with this choke. So you guys can imagine how efficient is that. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh, that's amazing. And did someone teach you that? Or you figure it out? Or you watch it as someone doing? How yeah, so this guy, uh, when I was training, when I was a kid, there was no kids classes at the gym that I, yeah. I trained at. And I was training the adult class. My dad taught. He was a purple belt, brown belt at the time. And he was teaching. And I would always get beat up by the adults. Nobody wanted to train with me because I was the yeah. kid. You yeah. know, they wanted to work out hard. And there was this little judo guy there. Um, short little judo guy and he showed me the baseball choke one day in between the rounds and he told me just to use it to help recover my guard when people go to break the yep, grips like yep. we just did yep. and for a long time I was like 11 12 years old too weak to hold the grips too long yep. so I would squeeze and when a little kid gets a tight choke you feel yep. it so they would go to break the grips and I'd recover my guard yep. and I used it like that for a long time I until I developed the grip strength to hold on and hold on I until know. people so go to sleep. So at first you developed as a way to recover to the recover guard my and guard, then yeah. when you started getting stronger and yeah. then, oh man it's amazing. At first it was a thing just to like put red lights flashing in the person you know and then yeah, like want to back up. Yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Oh that's amazing. Yeah, so guys, we just tried entire structure with Majid, all about the baseball choke from everywhere, from every position, all the concepts, and it's going to come out at bjjfanatics.com soon, maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So thanks so much, Majid. Thank awesome. you for having me. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.